ready whenever you are. Okay, we'll start our work session for the COVID-19 update. Uh, Trish, did you want to start? Uh, certainly. Uh, good afternoon. Um, today we had our uh, volunteer appreciation event um, up at uh, Tilbridge uh, Park. It was a lot of fun. It was great to see everybody. Um, and um, it was a, a good turnout. Um, not everybody that volunteered was able to be with us today, but it was it was great. It was really good for the staff. Um, I think um, the weather was amazing. It was a little on the warm side, but it was nice and cool up there in the shade. So it was it was a great time, and I really appreciate Belinda Bala and Concha Santoya's um, hard work in getting getting everything ready and set up for that. Um, so. I thought we'd go over the numbers. Um, as of today, we have 1,216 um, cases. Uh, that's a pandemic total. We've had a total of 47 hospitalizations and 33 deaths. As of this time today, we have zero active cases. We have zero contacts we're uh, following at the moment. And so we have a little reprieve for today. I hope it lasts for a couple of days. Um, anyway, um, our um, total in the last two weeks has been eight cases uh, and it's a positivity rate of about 2%. Uh, so um, we've we did 78 uh, vaccines yesterday or last week, uh, COVID vaccines, um, a variety um, of, uh, of kinds. We're offering all three vaccines. Um, we did have, um, have to shut down our vaccine clinic on Thursday because our vaccine refrigerator had some issues. Um, and we had to move our uh, vaccine. Um, it's all, everything is all stable now and taken care of and all of our vaccine is viable and we're, um, we're giving it as we speak. Um, so we're having, um, we had a couple of uh, pop-up vaccine clinics last week and um, I don't know, Darren, do you wanna go over? Um, go over those. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, last week, we were requested to come to Cascade Locks to do a vaccine pop up at Thunder Island Brewing, um, where the company was giving out $30 vouchers for the restaurant if someone was vaccinated on site. Um, so a small team of us went and set up in the downstairs um, event space to offer vaccines for anyone 12 and up. And we were able to vaccinate, I believe, about 25 people and um, spread the word too, which was great. And we may go back again because we were we did several Pfizer and Moderna doses that will require a second dose. So it may be that we go back there for again for a smaller pop up and perhaps with more anticipation so we can get the word out even broader um, because we got several people from town who were excited that Cascade Locks hadn't had an option. And just as this week for incentives, we also partnered with Mike's Ice Cream. So we're giving out double scoop vouchers for anyone who gets vaccinated. Yeah. So it's a new, new one we're offering. Yeah. We're, we're kind of um, rotating around the, um, the gift cards that we're giving out. So, so that's good. Um, so um, the mobile vaccine unit is continuing uh, in uh, Wasco County um, through July 7th, I believe. So that's, yeah. Um, it looks like we may be getting a mobile vaccine unit in August for Hood River County. It's not uh, been confirmed yet at this point, but that's something that uh, One Community Health is considering um, doing. Um, did you want to talk about, Darren, the um, full sale event coming? 
Sure, just to let everyone know that we've gotten some requests from specific companies to come and do vaccine education um, to increase vaccine confidence. So Full Sail is one of those companies that asked for um, some of us to go and talk to their staff in both English and Spanish about the vaccines and also how best to connect them with getting a vaccine if they're interested. Um, so we hopefully will be going this week. If not this week, we'll be going next week. Um, and we'd like to spread the word too that as, as our time is available, we're happy to come talk to people about, about vaccine and focus more on confidence events. So as of today, our, our um, uh, vaccinated rate in Hood River County for those 16 and up with at least one vaccine is 71.7%. That's what's, um, uh, reported on the OHA website today. There's just shy of 45,000 doses statewide uh, to reach the statewide goal of 70%. Um, and that, that goal is based on uh, people 18 and over. It's kind of convoluted the way that they report things and, and how uh, the metrics align. Um, but we're, we're dealing with it. We just know we're doing well uh, right now. Washington County is the only county that is, um, has a higher percentage vaccinated um, in the 18 plus range um, than Hood River County. And they're like uh, 0.3 percentage <laughs> points ahead of us. So they do have a lot more people that they can, can uh, tap to vaccinate, but we're, we're still holding our own. So does anybody have any questions? Arthur? Uh, uh, yeah, um, so uh, Trish, you said that uh, last week, or uh, I'm not sure what period, time period, but over, over a week, there were 78 vaccines that were, uh, that, that were done. Is that, uh, that were done by the health department? Or yes. does that include our partners? Yes. So do we know how many vaccines were done in Hood River County in the last week or over some period of time? Do we have some metrics of that? Uh, we have a percentage of increase um, numbers. I'm sure I could figure it out, but I, I just don't have that on the top of my head. Okay, uh, I think I have I, access to that too. Yeah. Uh, you're talking about from the OHA website from their- Correct. Their percentage increase numbers, good. So we get those every week, they mail those stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I, I can look at that. Can you remind me, um, or, or tell me what your general understanding is of, of our weekly vaccination rate. I know in many parts of the country it's plummeted. I don't get the feeling that ours has plummeted. It may be slowing down, but what, how would you characterize week to week the last couple of weeks? Uh, well, I think in the last couple of weeks, it's it's been pretty steady around 50 to 70 doses a week that we've been giving. Um, I know that the hospital continues to provide vaccine as well as the um, uh, our uh, primary care providers are still uh, providing vaccine. I don't know how much the vaccine the, the pharmacies are providing, but I would imagine that they're... Um, have it available if people if people are asking for it. Um, so I, you know, I I was concerned a couple of weeks ago that we were going to really drop off, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like that's happened yet. And are we uh, thinking about uh, anything uh, uh, aimed at uh, visitors? Um, any sorts of uh, outreach, um, that sort of thing. Is that something we care about? I mean, I know they're not residents, but uh, are, are we <clears throat> making it known to folks who are in town that, uh, you know, we'd like you to be vaccinated and we're happy to do it? Um, well, uh, we, we do widely, you know, advertise our, the availability of our of our clinics and on Thursdays we do put a, the sign out um, I think we've been talking about um, providing how we could provide in, uh, information for those visiting the area I think um, if we do get a mobile vaccine unit that would be um, provide um, a lot more resources for us to be able to really capitalize on um, vaccinating those um, tourists. Um, and 
um, just because we don't have a huge amount of um, capacity, though we haven't been overtaxed with what we're doing. Um, so right. we have been talking about um, providing some more pop-up um, offerings and experiences and, and thinking about what we can do uh, with partners um, during the fair and during other um, opportunities in, the, in our communities. Um, still thinking about partnering with the um, Gorge Grown uh, mobile food um, van and um, just, yeah, I don't think it's, we've really figured it all out yet, but um, you know, Darren's doing a great job uh, getting, uh, getting those things um, up and up and going, so. I love the fact that you did um, that one down on Thunder Island. I think that's wonderful, both to do the outreach to Cascade Locks and because it's just a clever uh, cross marketing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who doesn't love going to Thunder Island and, uh, you know, if you're getting a gift certificate and <clears throat> go in and get a beer and uh, and, and get right. vaccinated, it's a great idea. So I hope you keep on so, being creative and please do it again. All right. We did just get a call from another um, business that is willing to, um, send their, um, uh, their customers to us when they ask them if they've been vaccinated, if they have not, that they would provide them with some free service. And so, um, we're looking at, um, the possibility of, of partnering with more, um, local businesses. And if I may add to that too, just to go back to your question, Commissioner Babbitts, I anecdotally am seeing at all of our clinics, we are getting a trickle in of folks from out of town still. I think that's been true for a long time and I think it'll continue to be true. So as we move around doing pop-ups and make them available in different spaces, it seems like word is getting out well. People know to go to the health department's website to go to our event calendar and see what's most convenient. So, and we welcome anyone, you know, Mm -hmm. Cascade Locks, we did get some folks from across the river too who recreate or work or pass through Cascade Locks. So we're happy to vaccinate anybody. Darren, we're not getting repeat customers, are we? Other than <laughs> Not that I know of. Shot. <laughs> no. Okay. I think for the lottery, that's been enticing for some. I don't know. Yeah. Not that we know of. Not that we know of. Yes. Any other questions, commissioners? Yeah. So Currently, uh, well, I guess cherries are going full steam in uh, Wasco County right now. I'm wondering what North Central Public Health uh, is doing to address the influx of workers and if there's anything that we can do to mirror that, if, if, it's, if there's anything positive they're doing. Well, I think the fact that they have the uh, mobile vaccine unit there parked at St. Saint, at Saint Mary's, I don't know if you've you've seen it there, but uh, I drive by it twice a day, every, every day coming and going from work. So um, they're open from uh, 10 to six every day. Uh, no, I should say Tuesday through Sunday, they're open 10 to six. Um, and they've said they've been doing about 70 to 80 people, maybe up to 100 people on some days, but it's pretty generally about 50 to 70 people a day that they're seeing there. Um, so, so yeah, I know that uh, One Community Health did uh, get a mobile van. Um, I don't believe it's completely outfitted yet. I think it'll be ready sometime um, mid to late August. Um, but we're hoping that um, they take the lead and, and accept the mobile vaccine unit here in Hood River County for August. I think that would um, help. Uh, they do have uh, vans attached to the mobile vaccine unit that can go out on day trips and, and visit different um, farms and, and um, employers to be able to do that. So and we, this, as this we is, know, we have a whole, we have a lot of volunteers that are still willing to help us um, do vaccinations if we need to, if we need to do that. So that's the stationary mobile unit you talked about before, which mm -hmm. is okay. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I think that would be great if we could get that in places somewhere 
centrally located in the valley uh, mm-hmm. or somewhere where we can where we can utilize that um, at some point. Late August is a little bit late. I mean, mid August would be better. Well, um, the, I believe that it's available. Uh, the stationary mobile vaccine unit, that's what the, the one from the state is, it's, it's a FEMA trailer, is available from the 1st of August through the end of August. So it would be available for the entire month. And that is a decision um, for one community health because they would be the medical sponsor for that undertaking. Um, we don't have the capacity to, to work in, to, to do that. Um, but if they, um, it sounds like they're considering doing, doing that. We'll just have to see what their final decision is. So, so, so <clears throat> Bob, is there any concern about the, the people coming in for cherries into Hood River that needing some vaccination processes? Uh, I, you know, I, I'm only, I could only speculate. I mean, there, there's just not a huge number. I think that probably the largest would be uh, Hood River Cherry Company would have, I think, by far the largest um, number of workers, and they're pretty diligent about that. But I could reach out to uh, Mr. Fowler and ask him. But he's they're probably already working on that pretty aggressively. I had to guess. Yeah, and we can certainly reach out um, and and talk with um, them about um, their needs. Um, and making sure that we can um, get those addressed right away. Okay, they, they're close to pear season, really um, late enough. To, but yeah, no, I think in the next three weeks, probably that would be right. would at least reach out to them because they are okay. by far the largest. Okay. And, and if we have any orchestras that are in the cherry business that think that they need some help, we'll have them contact the health department. That would be great. Okay. I can just say that uh, anecdotally, most of the workers showing up through the H2A program uh, that, have, that have come uh, in prior years, most of them are vaccinated showing up, um, you know, a substantial amount, if not all. So one, that's a one thing that they've seen in Wasco County is that they have had some workers come in that have been previously vaccinated in Mexico with um, the Mexican um, uh vaccine and they have opted to revaccinate with um with the Pfizer vaccine which is acceptable after a certain number of days okay any other questions i don't have any questions but i just wanted to comment thank you and for the success that we're seeing in hood river i know you guys have worked really hard and i i know that our community really appreciates it so i hope that uh you know how, how much you're appreciated and how your hard work has paid off. Thank you. Thank you. Amen to that. <laughs> yeah, well, th- thank you for all your work, Trish and Darren. And, and I appreciated that uh, luncheon thing that we had today. That was that was fun. And, and I gotta you- tell you the story. I was sitting out there on one of the picnic tables with my wife and granddaughter on one side and the other side was another guy and I was talking to a, uh, your newest employment employee Mr. Gilbert mm-hmm. and I says is Mike Matthews here he says yeah he's right across he's right next to your wife <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not recognize him I haven't <laughs> seen him you know without since, a mask <laughs> yeah I, I haven't seen him period I mean every time yeah. I was on a deal with him every week uh, on the I was phone. on the telephone so I yeah. didn't get to and so anyway yes that well you you missed all the dancing so you left a little early yeah <laughs> yeah i had to go to work i'm sorry yeah. okay, okay we'll, we'll tell th- the, the commissioners i'm sorry the commissioners who weren't present I'll, I'll let them know trish and mike both did a wonderful job uh representing us and uh and speaking to the volunteers and thanking them and uh, i really uh i was uh, very grateful for the words that they delivered and uh, they did a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Arthur. Yep, sorry I wasn't there. Would have liked to have been. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> okay, Trish and Darren, thank you very much. Thank We're gonna you. move on to our next agenda item and that is ARPA funding discussion. Jeff? 
Yeah, this came up at the uh, the last meeting, and uh, we put it on the agenda to allow for further discussion. Um, as I indicated in the material, uh, staff is in the process of trying to put a, a little bit of a cash flow model together. Uh, we did have a meeting with uh, finance and public health folks last week. Um, it does appear, based on what we can uh, estimate right now, that probably public health over the life of these funds will need probably about $1.2 million. Um, and depending on how an encumbrance is defined, it could be potentially more than that. Um, I did compile a list of uses that have been sort of floated out there and discussed. I did not attach dollar amounts to any of those things yet. Uh, there may be other thoughts that the commissioners have as it relates to the use of these funds. Um, but this is the list that, that has been put in place up to this point in time. The county has received probably half a dozen or so requests from uh, entities outside of uh, the county itself uh, for these funds. It's pretty difficult at this point in time in looking at those requests to determine, at least for some of them, whether they would even be eligible for these kinds of funds or not. Some of them clearly are, and some of them, I think there's a question. Uh, I think staff's goal is to put some sort of a cash flow analysis together. My uh, sort of thought at this particular point in time is that uh, there will be money available for the commissioners to set aside to use for a grant program or grant programs, um, and it will probably be a substantial amount of money. And so to the extent that the commissioners have ideas about how you would like to see those funds used with uh, other entities within the county, um, you know, staff can staff can start to think about that kind of program. If you have questions about items that are on the list, I can talk a little bit about those as well. Uh, anyway, I think more than anything, this was an opportunity for the board to have further discussion. And based on any direction from the board, we can go back and do a little bit more work. But again, I do expect that there will be funds available here to do outreach outside of the county itself. Jeff, we still haven't received our first money, though, correct? Correct. OK, board members, questions, comments? Yes. I had a quick question on the list, Jeff. Um, there is the, uh, let me see, where is it? Um, affordable housing, and it's got Parkdale, Rand Road, land banking. Um, were we considering Odell unincorporated community boundary work? Uh, I didn't see it specifically listed. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't put it in there. In terms of what we have in the budget for this upcoming year, um, Odell is not in there. In the in the reason why is because we have to get a change to the Oregon rules in order to pursue Odell. I mean, we could pursue it, but it wouldn't. There's no guarantee that we would be able to get the rules changed in order to make Odell happen. I know that that is certainly something that the county is interested in. But our first, uh, our first attempt has been to get the state to change the five-mile rule. And to that end, uh, past commissioners have been active in trying to get that rule change as, as staff. Thank you. And then my second question, it was the interesting reading the uh, McKed um, uh, document that was attached. Um, one thing we didn't talk about was uh, child care. And it comes up in almost every discussion on limitations to people returning to work and to uh, recovery. And so it's not something we had really talked about as a board, but it seems to be coming up more and more frequently. And it was definitely fairly prominent in that document. So just wanted to throw that out there as one of those that I, we, we might want to have a discussion about. I'm glad you brought that up, Les. I'm, I'm beginning to have more thoughts on that as well. I, I've been concerned that this uh, un unability, inability for our, our our businesses to hire people back uh, was partly due because one, they were getting unemployment and two, they were getting an unemployment benefit. But I also beginning to realize that it's because, well, when they're home and getting paid, they don't have to have childcare, so they have all that extra income to, to use for other uses as well. 
And it just seems like this childcare thing is getting to be bigger and bigger as to whether or not people can justify going out to work. Well, I mean, it's expensive, but it's also, even if you have the money, it's hard to find a slot. I mean, there's just a, a general, there has been for some time, a general shortage of childcare, and it's been exacerbated. I know a couple of childcare providers who have retired just in the last uh, couple months. And so the pool is getting smaller, not bigger. I would agree. I think the most significant challenge is that our region lost child care providers during the pandemic. I, I would also, um, I, I'll point out, I think you folks made the strategic error of asking the only commissioner without children to make this list. So I, I, I certainly apologize for that, but I am 100% behind uh, us uh, adding child care to the list and considering it a very fundamental um, issue to getting the community back to work. I, I would, uh, maybe I read into this inappropriately, but uh, under your heading of tier four, assistant retooling to deal with new economic realities, that includes child care. That's I, new I just, economic realities. There's not enough child care. I yeah, and I, I, I didn't think it was it was not uh, possible under the list that we had. It's just to me has become more and more prominent as a as a major component. It should be explicit. Yeah, so I'm I'm glad you brought it up, Les. Uh, if I could make a, a, a brief comment. Uh, so my understanding, uh, Jeff, see if I got this right. Uh, what you said, I believe, is that uh, the cash flow analysis you're you're doing will tell us in July. Uh, uh, will be done in July. And is the outcome of that analysis a specific number of how much money should be reserved for the high tier within county items and therefore how much we'll have left for uh, a, a grant program or, is, or am I missing a step? Uh, no, I think that's, that's where we're headed is we're trying to give uh, the commissioners an idea of um, how much money you may want to set aside for future years versus um, get out the door right now. Or you could even, for some of that money that I will say perhaps will not be used by the county, you may want to even separate that into some different pots to disperse in different years as, you know, the response to the pandemic continues. So these uh, businesses and organizations that are looking at, uh, that, that might be eligible for grants that we might be issuing. Uh, I'd like to point out that, you know, the, the, we can have a greater impact if we can do things earlier. So I'm hoping that um, given that within a month, we'll uh, know the size of the pot. I would hope that before that time happens, we can start to at least do some rough work on how we might, uh, on, on what those grant programs might look like. And I'm wondering what the process might be for us to, to, to get that work done. So my, I mean, there's any number of thoughts that the commissioners may have as it relates to uh, the grant programs and you could separate out the funds uh, based on, you know, segments of the county. For example, you could say, well, we don't have numbers just yet, but X amount is for nonprofits, X amount is for businesses, um, you know, something like that. You could you could do it by economic sector. You could say, well, X amount we want directed towards um, economic recovery and uh, uh, hospitality slash tourism industry uh, because they were they were hit hard. I, I mean, you can. There's any ways that you could more specifically delineate uh, the use of these funds. And that's probably helpful to staff then as we set up grant programs and we can narrow then who applies for specific amounts of money. Um, I think it, it really depends on what the commissioners are interested in. So for example, if, if child care were an issue, do you solicit money uh, or solicit grant donations to entities that somehow are related to child care to try to uh, support child care, um, just as an example. 
I'm happy to do some more legwork. I'm just not sure where to go. It sounds like what would be helpful to staff is a pie chart effectively on the, you know, these are the, the percentage slices of the pie and we'll figure out the size of the pie later. Um, I'm wondering if maybe uh, preparing some sort of questionnaire on that so the commissioners can weigh in or, or even simply uh, uh, identifying what the possible slices of the pie might be so that people can then, so that our next meeting, we can have a public discussion or we can take testimony and, and start to discuss how to divide it up. I, I, I'm just, I'm trying to look for some way to move this forward um, without it, it, it taking too long. Um, you know, people, again, I just think that if, if we come back in December, January and say, oh, okay, we're starting a grant program now, you know, some folks may not be around to benefit from it and they might have been around if we had done something earlier. I, I would uh, say in terms of what the county has done with the funds that it had before, a specific to funds for businesses, those were administered through a grant program with Ted, who did a phenomenal job, I think, with the county uh, in dispersing both county CARES funds, a small portion, but then the, the larger amount of state funds that the county received for small businesses. And I also will remember that the county gave a chunk of money to United Way who provides funds then to social service organizations. And so you have partner organizations that have programs in place that allow money to be dispersed and they're good at it. Uh, we're not quite, quite set up to do that. We can certainly get set up to do that. And there is an allowance within ARPA to uh, allow the county to retain staff if we need to for administrative purposes. I don't know if that's the best use of the money or not, but that certainly is an option. And that was put in there in terms of a COVID recovery coordinator or call it a slash COVID recovery coordinator, uh, grant manager, if there's grants involved. There's just different ways to look at this, um, but there are organizations in the county that disperse money uh, to various groups and organizations and they're good at it. So you're suggesting quick response, we should, uh... Uh, at least consider deferring to um, to our partners who've done it, who did it the first round. That certainly is a possibility, and it would go probably much more quickly than if we tried to reinvent the wheel. Makes sense. Jeff, did did you get a number from McKed on the number of uh, unfilled uh, grants from the first time around? I don't remember seeing that. We did, yes. Yeah. I don't remember it off the top of my head. Uh, but we did get a number, and I think there was a dollar amount associated with that. Okay. Just be interesting to have that when we move forward to continue our discussion to know what that is. Obviously, those folks uh, needed the money bad enough to apply within a week, or at least were interested. So I think that I'd like to at least have a discussion about what to do with those. Um, so, so it sounds like next next meeting, we may be in the position, or we'll likely be in the position, where Jeff will tell us, how much money we have available and we can say, okay, let's take this number, make it available for quick response. And Jeff, please work with United Way, please work with McKed to uh, set up a program to do that, right? Is that, a, is that where we that, we'll likely be next week, uh, next meeting? I believe that's a possibility. Um, you know, if the board wants to go that direction, um, again, that's quicker. Um, those those organizations do that, uh, have programs like that, and they they do it well. It, it sounds like I, I need, I, I mean, I think I need to see this cash flow schedule that's coming. I'm still very vague on how we're dividing up into these tiers and, and even what amount of money we're talking about for this granting opportunity. I'm not as satisfied as I think that the rest of you are with McKed's process and who received the money in that go around. And I do have the list of those that did not receive money or were excluded because they'd received dollars before. So I'm not convinced that would be a, an, a great hand through pass through opportunity. I think that we maybe need to take a better look at that again and make sure it's hitting the right pockets of the local economy that we're hoping to. But just to wrap my head around this amount of money 
and the duration of time allowed for expenditure, I feel that I need to take this cash flow schedule to have an understanding of what staff's concepts are first before we start even getting into thinking about handing pots of money over to other, other outside entities for disbursement. That's my opinion on this issue. I need, a, I need July's meeting before I can comment on those other things. Any other comments, commissioners? No, I, I'd agree with Commissioner Joplin for sure. Um, uh, there, there is one more comment, and this is not, I, I apologize, but it's on the, it's on the McKed document actually. And under the uh, agricultural, agricultural heading, under agricultural workforce, there's a link to a study that shouldn't be linked into that document. It's, uh, there's an incredible amount of propaganda in that study. Uh, it's absolutely not supported by the ag industry and it's damaging for sure. And I understand that a rare put this together, probably reached out, grabbed that from somewhere, but it's information from September, 2021 uh, that's inaccurate. And there's it's just a lot of false information in there put together by uh, you know organizations with political motivations and it doesn't need to be in an objective uh, McKed document like this. So I would appreciate, I mean, I can reach out to um, Jessica Mehta and have that conversation, but it, I don't know how it landed there. I mean, I kind of have a feeling of how, but it needs to be removed. Wait, now I got to go and read that. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy to wait until uh, July. I'm not happy to wait till August. Uh, so I, I think if we can put this on the on the agenda for July and and have a substantive discussion in July, I'll, I'll, I'll be. I think that we'll be doing our job to move it along. And I certainly understand Commissioner Joplin's concerns. And I I, I, I haven't had a chance to examine the uh, the previous round and the detail that she has. And so I would certainly defer to her on that. The, uh, the other thing I would say is for all the commissioners is uh, between now and uh, the July meeting, if you have ideas consistent uh, with the tiered structure and even consistent with the board's strategic goals uh, or strategic plan about these funds, uh, I would welcome an email from, from any of you uh, stating what those are. Um, I think the brainstorming has been extremely helpful. And that we've gotten ideas internally. I've talked with others in the community. Um, and so it, it's just really valuable. So I would, if you have anything, please send it along. I think that's a great idea, Jeff. If every commissioner could sit down and, and brainstorm within themselves and come up with uh, what they're thinking on these different options, it'd be great. Kind of give Jeff a little bit of a leeway or where we're headed here. Um, any other comments by the commissioners? Yeah, one more for me. Um, Jeff, are you able to communicate with Gordon Zimmerman of Cascade Locks and keep him abreast of our process and where we are? And I know he's looking to understand if there's any opportunity for additional law enforcement in Cascade Locks. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. And just so the rest of you Commissioners know he he's expressing an up to again. Karen, There's you broke up there. Can you say that again? Cascade Locks has experienced an uptick in criminal activity, probably resulting from the economic depression from the pandemic. And their monies, they are using those to purchase an ambulance and enhance some fire safety with their fire department. So they're looking to see if there's any opportunity for enhanced law enforcement for their Cascade Locks community. Jeff, we might also make sure that the commissioners get all the other individual requests that have come out. Maybe we can put them in a group and get them to the commissioners. Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. Okay, and I, I apologize, Jeff, I've been directing people your way with specific requests. I don't know if that's appropriate that's or not. Great. Okay. No, I appreciate that. That's, uh, that's really helpful. Um, and so all of that is, from my perspective, valuable input. Um, I think, uh, you know, I spoke with uh, Doug Kelly from Westside Fire. Um, I think you may have directed it my way. And we talked uh, for 
for a bit, and you know, and I got an understanding of what what their particular need might be. Um, Oregon State University Extension Service, I, I heard from them. Uh, Port of Cascade Locks, the Cascade Locks Museum, um, City of Cascade Locks, uh, I, and I know I'm missing some, but those those are just those are just some that I've heard from. I think there was a couple uh, arts groups too that also ask about money available. I think the Voci group, <clears throat> which is musical and musicals and plays and stuff. And then the, the group that has the uh, art center downtown. Okay, any other comments, commissioners? Anything else, Jeff? I uh, don't, no, not on that, thank you. Okay, we've got uh, 10 minutes before our six o'clock this meeting starts, so uh, we'll take a break and convene at six o'clock. Uh, Heidi, we can just stay on here, right? Uh, yes, Chair, you can. I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording. Oh. I am. Okay. Karen, are you there? Oh, here she comes. Okay. Lisa, are you there? I am, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. It's now six o'clock and I'll begin the business meeting for the Hood River County Board of Commissioners for this June 21st. Before I go to the additions or deletions from the agenda, Lisa, I have a technical question for you. We'd like to move, like to move uh, executive uh, session uh, for uh, labor uh, negotiations uh, to the uh, uh, back of the agenda. Should we also put on coming out of executive session in case we need, need to make any decisions on from that? executive decision that would be correct mr chair okay okay at this time i'm looking for additions or deletions from the agenda and i want to add for the end of the uh agenda that we will be going into executive session under labor negotiations ors 192.6602 d and after that, we may come out of executive session and go back into regular session in case we need to make any decisions at that time. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Okay. Any conflict or potential conflicts of interest? Hearing none, we're going to move to public hearings. First up. The Hood River County public hearing on the Hood River County budget. And at this time, I'll open the public hearing for the Hood River County budget and ask for, for a staff report. Tina? Yes, sir. Um, staff report. Okay. So um, the budget was updated for the um, budget committee at their May 13th meeting. Um, the, the items that were approved at that meeting were um, added to the budget, which is um, posted online. And um, so I think that's about all the reports that I have. Um, would you like for me to go over those changes? I don't reminder? think that's that's necessary unless the commissioners want some. Uh, do we have a a figure for the amount of the uh, of what's going to be taxed? Uh, I don't know that I have that with me. Okay. I did I did not bring that with me. I'm not prepared to answer that question. Okay. At this time, I'll ask the commissioners if they have any questions. Um, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, do we need to make the disclosure that uh, the budget includes a uh, salary for us? Is that necessary? This I'm kind of confused on how that works. Lisa, do we need to do, meet, make that part of our uh, discussion? I No, Mr. Chair, I don't believe so. It's part of the budget as presented. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions by commissioners? Uh, just, just a comment, 
Chair Oates, uh, within the uh, resolution on the Hood River County uh, budget adoption um, that makes the appropriations, there is a section in there that talks about the taxes to be levied uh, for the general fund and then for the public safety five-year local option levy, and those amounts are in there. That's part of the resolution. Uh, could you tell us the page number on that? Uh, well, in my online packet version, it's page 42 out of 126. For the rate or the the, the amount that's being taxed. The resolution's on page thirty-eight, and then uh, it's four pages long and has all of those. It has the numbers in it. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Perkins. It starts on page thirty-eight. To... Okay. It just, just seems like in the past we had a, a amount of taxation rate that we included in this, but maybe I'm mistaken. The, um, yes, it does. It says $1.41. It's 1.4171. Right. And 0.78 for the public, uh, for the local option. That's on the last page. I apologize. There I it misunderstood. Is. There it is. Thank, thanks, Les. Yep. Okay, at this time, I'm going to open it up to any uh, comments or questions by the general public. Uh, Heidi, do we have anyone from the public that would like to speak on this matter? Okay, then I'll ask the commissioners one more time. Any more questions by the commissioners? This time I'll close the public hearing and call for deliberation by the commissioners. I think the budget committee did its job and this is what we, uh, this is what we should pass. Agreed, I will make a motion to adopt the Hood River County budget as presented and levy the taxes for the fiscal year, July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Joplin. Yes. Commissioner Perkins. Yes. Commissioner Benton. Yes. Commissioner Babbitts. Yes. Chair votes yes. Next up is the uh, public hearing for the 911 Communication Service District. This time I'll open the public hearing on the 911. Communication Service District. Is there any staff report on this one? Uh, the, there were no changes to the this budget. It's exactly as it was um, requested and approved by the Budget Committee. Okay. Any questions by commissioners? Is there anyone from the public that, that would like to speak on this matter? Heidi, do we have anyone for the 911 service district? Uh, Chair. Uh, Chair, no, we do not. No, we do not. Okay. Any other questions by commissioners? This time I'll close the public he hearing and open up for deliberation by the commissioners. Any discussion or is there a motion? Uh, I'll make a motion to adopt the 911 communications district budget as presented and uh, <clears throat> levy the taxes for the fiscal year, July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. Second. Second. Oh. Okay, it was moved by Bob, seconded by Les, I believe. Um, any other discussion by the commissioners? 
Commissioner Babbitts? Yes. Mr. Ben? Yes. Mr. Joplin? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Chair votes yes. The 911 Community Service District budget has been adopted as presented. Next, next up, um, Windmaster Urban Renewal District. This time I'll open the, the public hearing on the Windmaster Urban Renewal District. Is there any any input from the staff on this? Uh, no, sir, there's no input. It's, a, it's as it was requested. There were no changes to this budget. Okay, thank you. Any questions by commissioners? Is there anyone in the audience that wants to speak to the matter of the public hearing on the Windmaster Urban Renewal District budget? Heidi? Uh, Chair, no, there is not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions by commissioners? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing and call for commissioner's deliberation. I move we adopt the Windmaster Urban Renewal District budget as presented and levy the taxes for the fiscal year July 1, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. Second. We move by last seconded by Bob that we approve the uh, budget for the next year for Windmaster Urban Renewal District. Commissioner Joplin? Yes. Commissioner Perkins? Yes. Mr. Ben? Yes. Mr. Babbitt? Yes. Chair votes yes. The uh, Windmaster Urban Renewal District budget for the next year has been adopted as presented. Next up, I'll open the public hearing for the Windmaster Sewer District. And there are no taxes on this one, which is interesting. And open the public hearing. To, uh, is there any staff report on this, Tina? Uh, no, sir. Same, same budget as that was presented and approved by the budget committee. Okay. Is there any public comment on the Windmaster Sewer District, ID? No, there are not. Okay, thank you. Any other questions by commissioners? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing on the Windmaster Sewer District and open up to, for deliberations by the commissioners. Uh, Mr. Chair, to spread it around, I would uh, make a motion that we adopt the Windmaster Sewer District budget as presented for fiscal year July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022. I will second. Been moved by Arthur and seconded by Karen that we approve the Windmaster Sewer District budget as presented. Uh, all those, let's see. Commissioner Babbitts. Yes. Mr. Ben. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes. Commissioner Joplin. Yes. Chair votes yes. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Yes, I know sir, it's been welcome. a lot of work, <laughs> especially with our new system, but we got through it. Thank you for all your work. And Jeff, thank you too. I know you were involved a lot as well. Okay, now we're gonna move on to our, our next public hearing. This is on the Hood River County Zoning Ordinance Amendments regarding permit timelines and extensions for articles 1, 3, 4, 18, and 56. I'm gonna read the title of this ordinance. It's now an ordinance amending various articles of the Hood River County Zoning Ordinance regarding permit timelines and extensions, including articles 1, 3, 4, 
18 and 56. This time I'll ask Eric for the staff report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioners, as noted, I'm here tonight on behalf of the Hood River County Planning Commission to request that the board adopt various amendments to the county zoning ordinance related to land use permit timelines and extensions. Uh, as currently proposed, the amendments primarily involve the following. Uh, one would be to increase the initial approval period for all land use permits outside the farm and forest zone from two to four years setting a two-year extension period for all approved permits outside of the farm and forest zone, limiting the number of extensions outside of the farm and forest zone to one unless approved by the board with a public hearing in conjunction with a qualifying extraordinary event, limiting the number of additional extensions in the farm and forest zones to two, and clarifying the permit timelines, including those involving extensions, do not begin until all appeals have been settled. Um, as discussed during two prior work sessions held by the board, the purposes of the proposed amendments are to provide needed clarification and consistency throughout the ordinance while addressing discrepancies that have resulted in several recent appeals. Staff finds that the proposed amendments best achieve these pur purposes and therefore is recommended that the board accept the new language and adopt the draft ordinances as written. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. This time, Heidi, is there anyone in the audience that wants to give public testimony on this hearing? Uh, no, Chair, there is not. Okay, thank you. This time I'll open it up for deliberation by the County Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I'm not sure the appropriate time, but I might as well just disclose at this point a potential conflict of interest, uh, considering that I do have uh, or am involved in multiple uh, applications that are at varying stages in the planning uh, approval process that may or may not be impacted by this uh, piece of legislation. Thank you, Thank Commissioner you. Ben. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I, I, I just tried to clarify, uh, last time we discussed this, we made a request uh, to have a small change in language uh, I, I believe that that's included in here, but I'm having, I'm, I'm having trouble finding it now, which had to do with the, uh, the nature of the extraordinary circumstance. It, it was something like uh, adding a clause uh, that was not only for um, a, a, uh, a permit, but a application, something like that. Um, um, can can uh, Steph remind me of that change? Sure. Uh, it is in subsection 1.130 C1 little a on page, I don't know what page on the document that you have. No, it's page 54. But essentially what you requested, what you requested Commissioner Babbitts was adding um, the word or approval. So what it says is, is you, you may qualify if there's a delay in obtaining a state or federal permit, and then you add, you suggested adding the word or approval associated with the approved project. And so that language was added. Yeah, I'm not sure it was, I, th I thought it was Commissioner Perkins who requested it, but yeah, that, that's what I was looking for, thank you. And with that added, I, I'm quite satisfied uh, that uh, great work was done here and I'm prepared to vote for it. Other commissioners? Just a quick comment on, on my part. I I was satisfied with what the uh, planning commission had put forward originally, but uh, I'm also very supportive of, of the small changes that we as the board made. So I, I support that 100%. So at this time, uh, do we have a motion to consider the adoption and signing of this ordinance? Oh, I also need to close the public hearing. Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Chair, just to clarify, you're asking for a motion to approve the second reading of the ordinance. That's not I, what I'm asking. I, I'm asking to approve. Oh. 
consider adopting the ordinance. Is that correct, Lisa? Because that's what's on my, what's on my notes. notes. Yes, you're adopting the ordinance. The, the motion, however, is to approve the second reading of the ordinance. And then you can state the second reading is approved and the title of the ordinance read is adopted. Okay. <laughs> I will make a motion to approve the second reading of the ordinance by title. Second. Any discussion? Commissioner Babbitts? Yes. Mr. Benton? Yes. Mr. Joplin? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Chair votes yes. Now, Lisa, does that complete this or do we have, have to approve the ordinance? Um, you've approved it. You can just state that the second reading is approved and an ordinance amending various articles of the Hood River County Zoning Ordinance regarding permit timelines and extensions is approved. Okay. okay. The second reading for the ordinance amending various articles of the Hood River County Zoning Ordinance regarding permit timelines and extensions has been approved and the ordinance is finished. Thank you. Good work. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. This time I'll open up the, uh, the meeting to any public comment from people that are, want to talk about something that's not on the agenda. Heidi, is there anyone that signed up to talk to the commissioners? Uh, Chair, no, there is not. Okay, this time I will move the reports. Jeff, would you like to go first, reports? Sure items this evening. I wanted to let the commissioners know that the county has received a request from Hood River Disposal uh, to basically renew their franchise. Their current franchise expires August 31st. I did check the franchise ordinance and uh, there is essentially no process to, other than approval by the board for uh, that to be reauthorized for another period of time. So staff will look into that and I would expect that that will be in front of the commissioners at the next meeting. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Post Canyon Road as there was some uh, discussion and rumors floating around in the community about what the county was or wasn't doing with Post Canyon Road. Uh, there are a couple of things related to Post Canyon Road, um, one of them directly and one of them indirectly. Indirectly, the county at this time is looking at a parking permit program for its forest, specifically recreational use for the staging areas within the forest. And Post Canyon uh, as an access point into the forest uh, was looked at as a potential place to put parking spaces. And when that was looked at, it was determined that the road is not necessarily in the right of way and the county would need to go through a legalization process in order to fix that particular issue before any parking could be put along Post Canyon Road. At the last meeting, the commissioners approved the resolution to start that legalization process uh, so that the county can ensure that its road is within its right of way. Um, I want to be clear that there are no designs or design concepts on the table to make any improvements parking or otherwise on Post Canyon Road at this time. The legalization process will take at least a year and I'm going to guess given uh, the level of conversation about Post Canyon Road in the community, it probably will take a year and a half. So this is going to be some time out and once it's determined that the county has its road within its right of way or if we need to fix it so that it is within the right of way, then at that point in time, the county will consider looking at improvements and potentially parking along Post Canyon, but not until then. Uh, having said that, the parking permit program doesn't necessarily need to have parking spaces on Post Canyon Road to move forward. Um, and staff is circulating a draft ordinance on that parking permit program. It's being vetted internally. It's possible that that will be in front of the commissioners for review at the July meeting but probably most likely it will be in front of the commissioners at the September meeting. So I just wanted to give an update on that um, as I'm aware that there is uh, conversation in the community about that. 
I wanted to let the commissioners know that year-end is approaching and you will likely be asked to approve uh, some budget adjustments in an email poll so that we can close out the year in conformance with the local budget law. So be looking for that. I know Tina is laser focused on uh, getting that work done between now and the end of the year to ensure that uh, we close our books appropriately. And then finally, uh, as was discussed, the next meeting will actually be a hybrid meeting. And uh, we're looking forward to having uh, in-person meetings again in July. And that is the plan right now. Uh, and we are also looking at the air circulation system here in hopes of getting something that will move air more consistently in this room. That's my report. Thank you. Any questions for Jeff? Hearing none, uh, Commissioner Babbitts. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were expecting me to vote on something. Uh, are we talking about uh, these are commission, these are reports on the committees? Sure. Okay. Uh, so actually, uh, uh, most of my committees have meetings this week. Um, um, Mid Columbia Community Action Council has a meeting tomorrow, and Visitor River has an annual uh, retreat sort of meeting. Uh, uh, which we're actually conducting in person, uh, which will be conducted on Wednesday. Uh, so what I would say is uh, concerning the Visit Hood River, if you have any messages you'd like me to give Visit Hood River uh, in, their, uh, in their strategic planning meeting, uh, either tell me now or feel free to contact me sometime before Wednesday. I know that uh, they are eager to make the case that the commission should uh, restore the uh, percent of the um, the TRT that uh, used to go to the uh, to visit Hood River uh, is now being used to uh, to work on the um, the campgrounds and that sort of thing. They're eager to see that restored to visit Hood River, and uh, they will be probably trying to make that case. And if you have any comments to share, uh, which would help them in understanding that, it would be helpful to me if you would share those with me. Any questions for Commissioner Babbitts? Commissioner Ben. Well, we had the, uh, I believe it was last week, a week ago, the um, by state bridge working group meeting and we were informed, I may have mentioned this last time that uh, Senator King from Washington State secured $5 million to, um, <clears throat> to be appropriated to continue the project forward into phase two, which will advance hopefully engineering and maybe we get closer to being more appealing for a large funding package to uh, build a bridge. Um, I think that I don't want to speak for Commissioner Babbitts, but he and I are both, um, you know, kind of of the understanding this is our best opportunity for funding uh, through the federal government for a large chunk. And if we don't get any, we need to probably pivot and go a different direction. But uh, so, but the $5 million will at least help us continue engineering. And that's, uh, that's a good thing. We've asked the state for five, the state of Oregon for 5 million. Also, we've heard nothing back. Uh, and also, uh, despite the new earmarks, it's unclear if we're going to be getting any money from the federal government uh, through that process. It's still too early to tell. Uh, at least short-term money, uh, small dollars, not to fund the bridge, but to complete the engineering portion. So, uh, anyway, that there's that. And uh, at Norcor, we presented the Norcor board with. Uh, I say we, Commissioner Schwartz and I, as well as the management team, presented the Norcor board with the initial draft structure, management structure that we we uh, wanted to propose. And we've got two months between this meeting and the next meeting for everybody to think about it. And we'll see how everybody reacts once they've had time to sit down and digest it and come back. I'm sure this won't be the end of it, but we'll uh, look forward to good discussion two months from now uh, in reshaping the management structure in our core. Uh, let's see the, uh, the um, I also sit on the Farm Service Agency County Committee that represents uh, the federal government with respect to Wasco County and uh, Hood River County. And I just wanted to comment that uh, we're, we're seeing more uh, violations of CREP and CRP contracts, which are basically the environmental protection contracts that ranchers engage in to protect um, sensitive areas such as wetlands and, uh, and really anywhere near a waterway. It keeps livestock out, but because of the uh, significant drought conditions moving forward and uh, the impacts from fire over the last few years, we're seeing uh, you know more people press the boundaries of what what they've agreed to just because it's uh you know putting a lot of pressure on on these individual ranchers so that's just uh 
information. Uh, anyway, there was one other committee I was going to comment on, and unfortunately, I can't remember. So this will be the end of my report. Any questions for Commissioner Ben? I'll just make the observation on, on, on the bridge. The issue really is in our lifetimes, there has never been this much money talked about for infrastructure investment. Now it hasn't been approved yet, but something will be approved and whatever is approved is going to be the most that we're going to see for the next several decades, I'm sure. Uh, and so therefore this really is our last best chance to get uh, public monies applied to this project. And, and I'm hoping it becomes really clear if we're unsuccessful. And number one, I think we should do everything we can to, uh, to, to get those public monies. But if we're unsuccessful at that, we're going to have to look at alternatives. And I hope that becomes eminently clear to everybody. Good point. Commissioner Joplin. Mid Columbia Center for Living adopted their balanced budget for the next fiscal year and the Columbia Gorge Health Council is kind of in the middle and finishing up some strategic planning work in joint with Pacific Source as our CCO. And everything's positive and looking good for the next year. And that's all I have. Thank you. Any questions for Commissioner Joplin? Thank you, Karen. Commissioner Perkins. You've been out to a lot of meetings. <laughs> I wiped my calendar uh, for the last three weeks. So um, things are super exciting from the couch in my living room. Okay. Well, Les, I hope, hope things are getting better for you. I know it's been a tough deal being tied up because you're not the kind of guy that likes to sit around. No, it's, it's not fun. No, no. Okay, I, I have a few things. Um, in the AOC Natural Resources Committee meeting here a couple of weeks ago, we passed a resolution to go to uh, senators and representatives, tell them that we wanted to have more detailed information on what was being talked about or proposed for uh, wild and scenic areas. And, and uh, what do we call that? Uh, wilderness areas for particularly with each individual counties because we don't seem to be getting the information that we want and some of these uh, representatives aren't talking to each other so that became a uh, resolution from the AOC's subcommittee so I appreciated that. Um, at our ODOT meeting after our last directly after our last commissioner meeting uh, nothing new came up it was mostly talking about things in the Multnomah area and uh, talking again about the uh, Use of tolling, which is a big subject for metropolitan area up there, but we get to be in on that, even though it doesn't have anything to do with Hood River. But, uh, at Merkley's meeting last Friday, so it was for um, uh, county leaders or, or community leaders for Hood River County. And uh, unfortunately they invited like 20 people and they gave us 30 minutes. So I didn't get to talk. But I did want to talk to uh, Senator Merkley about the bridge and not just the Hood River Bridge, but the Cascade Locks Bridge. And luckily, uh, Christy Chapman from the Port Commission got to talk to him and said the exact same things I would have said that, uh, you know, any money that can be directed here for this infrastructure to help with engineering or scoping or whatever, wherever the process is right now would be greatly help, helpful. And, and she did get that message to him. And then Mark Johnson also got the message to him about Cascade Locks, how they don't need to necessarily replace the bridge. But they need to reinforce it and, and put in a walking bicycle in section for it so that they can uh, connect the Pacific Coast Trails because that's the one break in the Pacific Coast Trail that uh, between Mexico and Canada. And, uh, and as Mark pointed out, you can kind of get two things from the same one. You can get you can reinforce that bridge and make it usable for several decades to come and, and still be usable. Plus you could uh, solve the problem with uh, not being able to have pedestrians and bikes go across it. So Mark did a good job too of presenting that. I do plan on talking to Dan Mayer, who's uh, 
Berkeley's representative that is really a better way to talk to Merkley anyway. He's just, you know, he's so dang busy. I, I, I'm going to talk to the mayor about this bridge thing too. I think it's really important, like uh, Arthur and Bob said, you know, with all this infrastructure dollars that are coming down, make sure our, our main guys in the federal government know that we can really use this. So I want to make sure I do that. A um, couple other things. Uh, I got a call a few months ago now from uh, Peggy Sato. You may not know Peggy Sato, but she grew up here in the Valley. Her Parents and grandparents, I think her grandfather was like the first uh, Japanese American to grow orchards in Hood River County. And they were they're big orchards there, uh, just just west of Parkdale. And she was requesting or, or asking if it would be possible to rechange some of that, uh, I believe it's baseline, from the corner of where it enters Parkdale West over to where it hits uh, Old Parkdale Road and, and name it under like Saddle Drive or Saddle Road, whatever. But, and I've, I've been trying to get the information through the county and, and I've gotten information with help from Heidi and, and Jeff on what the process is in. And I just recently asked her to make a formal uh, application. There is another possibility that instead of a, a name change for the road, because that does affect people who live on it, you might do a, an honorary name that's on that road for that portion of it and not change the actual address names on that road. So anyway, that's something that might be coming before the board and I wanted to let you know about it. Uh, last thing I have, uh, it, we lost another ex-county commissioner, uh, Shirley Ecker, who was, I believe, in the 80s. Uh, she was on the planning commission with me when I was on the planning commission. She went on to be a county commissioner. It was a great force on the, on the county commission and a great commissioner. I think, I believe she was the second female that was on the county commissioner, on the county commission, but uh, we lost her in the last couple of weeks. That's that's my report. Any questions? Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, uh, I was unaware of a need for reinforcement of the Cascade Lock Bridge. Uh, uh, this is kind of the first I've heard of it. Where would I go to become more intelligent about that subject? Oh. Olga is the uh, uh, manager right now for the Port of Cascade Locks. I'd get that information from her. I'm sorry, could o you repeat that name? Olga. Uh, I'm not sure I can pronounce her last name. Okay, if you just, could you send me an email then? I appreciate that. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah I've got it in mind. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Next up is our consent agenda. I, I do have a question. In our consent agenda, we have a, a budget committee meeting minutes to be approved. Is it okay, Lisa, for us to do that as a board of commissioners instead of the, uh, the budget committee approving that? Is that okay? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, just checking. Okay, any questions on the consent agenda, comments? Move we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Any discussion by commissioners? Moved by last second by Arthur that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Commissioner Babbitts? Yes. Mr. Benton? Yes. Mr. Joplin? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Chair votes yes. Consent agenda is approved. Work session action items. I don't believe we're doing an action item on the ARPA funding. Is that correct, Jeff? That's correct. Okay. New business enterprise zone redesignation. Consider approving a resolution to redesignate the Cascade Locks Hood River Enterprise Zone. Jeff? Sure. Uh, in the packet is the resolution to redesignate the enterprise zone for Hood River County um, and for the cities as well and ports. In front of the commissioners a couple of times before and uh, the latest conversation was whether or not uh, what I would refer to as tourist-related facilities would be included or not. Uh, they were excluded, and so those are not included in this particular redesignation. Um, the area has changed slightly from the last uh, designation, and that's based on um, the requirements uh, associated with 
what's eligible and what isn't eligible, and so the state has done that work um, in order to determine what's eligible. Uh, there was a question that the board had, um, and I got the most recent information from records and assessment this week, and that is what is the tax loss associated with uh, the enterprise zone. And for this uh, this period of time, it's $104,000 is the number that I recall. That's for all taxing jurisdictions, so that's not just for the county. Counties is roughly about 10% of that. Uh, the zone, if reauthorized by the commissioners would go for, um, can I get my dates right, 10 years, so it would, would be up for renewal again in 2031. Um, Alice Witt is on, uh, on the Zoom meeting and she can answer any hard questions that you have. Alice, is there any information you'd like to add to that? Um, no, I think I think that's sort of the straightforward summary. I would say the, the I guess the only thing I'll add is that so this zone it would be eligible for redesignation, which is the process we're going through right now in 2031. So it's a, a decade long approval, but boundaries can be changed at any time. Um, so th there's there's opportunities to change the boundaries within the economic criteria that's allowed by the state. Okay, thank you, Alice. Commissioners, any questions for Jeff or Alice? I got um, one. Go ahead. I understand that uh, Alice is here to answer hard questions, so uh, I'll ask Alice. Uh, do you um, have any breakdown as to the benefits of the enterprise zone designation by City of Cascade Locks versus City of Red River versus County? Uh, do we do we know, or do you have that information handy? Yeah, when you say benefits, um, are you talking about like where the projects that have used the enterprise zone are located? Exactly, precisely, yeah. yep. Let me pull that up real quick. Um, if there's other questions, I got to get to the file. So um, I'm happy to answer other questions while I navigate there. I think Jeff made the comment that he thought that of the $104,000 for this last year, 10% of it was in county areas, correct, Jeff? Well, that, the, the tax, if you look at the percentage of the total taxes collected and what percentage is the county, it's roughly about that. Okay. Not that the projects were located out in the county, but that's our, our tax take. Okay, okay, right. different subject then, okay. So I, I I'm sorry, Alice, are you ready to go or should I? Or, or are we, yes, are we so I, okay. I believe I'm looking at the right file. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, five in the last um, five years or so, like the sort of recent enterprise zone users in the city of Hood River. One, two, three in the city of Cascade Locks and one in the county which is um, Know Your Fruit LLC. Great, thank you. So uh, I guess my, my comment on this overall has been that I, I, I am suspicious of how beneficial enterprise zones are to our community. Uh, and I brought this up earlier and I had a chance to discuss with uh, the Hood River City Mayor uh, my concerns. And she told me that they had actually had a similar discussion at their at the city council meetings for Hood River, uh, but that eventually they decided to go ahead anyway and to uh, request a, a reauthorization. So I guess my overall reaction is, uh, I believe that the city councils are probably, uh, uh, you know, they, they have the knowledge and the judgment to make the determination as to whether these use of these zones is in their benefit. And I am not in the position where I am prepared to second guess them on that. Uh, and I believe that both the city of Hood River and Cascade Locks have requested uh, reauthorization. So I'm not um, going to continue with my questioning of the uh, of, of the wisdom of that. As for the county's use, it sounds like it's quite small and um, incidental. So I'm not sure it's worth us spending much time talking about. Okay. 
Other commissioners? Well, I, I'll just add that I, I was a little bit surprised that when the cities both decided to opt out of the, uh, the I believe it's like uh, hotel, motel, tourist developments, but uh, I understand why. <laughs> and it made, yeah. probably made sense to me. Yeah. Mr. Chair, do you know, did Cascade Locks also opt out of that? Or is it just yeah. the city of Hood River? I'm sorry, Alice, could you repeat? Um, I can speak to that, yeah. Um, no, none of the jurisdictions in the zone are including hotel motel, so no Cascade Locks, no Hood River, no county. Any other comments by the commissioners? A motion for a resolution. I would move that we approve the resolution for a redesignation of the Cascade Locks Hood River Enterprise Zone. Second. Any further discussion? I assume this is as presented, which does not include like the hotel motels, as the same as city Cascade Locks and Correct. City Hood River. Yeah, okay. Any other discussion? Mr. Babbitts? Yes. Mr. Benton? Yes. Mr. Joplin? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you, Alice. Appreciate the information. Thank you all. Okay. Is there anything else, Jeff, at this time before we go back into executive session? No, Chair, I have nothing. Anything else by the commissioners? Okay, this time we're going to close the regular meeting of the Hood River County Commission or, or for, for now and go into executive session under ORS 192.660 2D labor negotiations. However, we may come out of that later and come back into regular session if we need to make a decision. Okay, Heidi, how do you want to handle this? Okay. Right. Chair, pause the meeting and then you are pause the recording. I'll give her 30 seconds. It's now 7.35 and then bringing the uh, meeting of the Hood River County Board of Commissioners back into regular session. Um, we wanted to have a discussion about uh, a proposal. Jeff, can you, can you go back over that proposal that we talked about? Sure, the proposal is to be consistent with the budget that was just approved by the Board of Commissioners. Um, within the budget, there's a 3% amount of money for raises for fiscal year 21-22. And those raises for cost of living would appear in the form of a 2% increase July 1st, 2021, and a 2% increase January 1st, 2022. And specifically, who are, who are we talking about here for this proposal? It would be for the non-represented employees of Food River County. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Do we need someone to make a motion or is that how, we're, what are we looking for here? I'm, I'm yeah. a little. Are we just doing a consensus agreement to move forward with the proposal? Are we making uh, an action? I would think it's an action item, so I would do a motion in a second. I would move that we uh, proceed in the manner our, uh, our uh, able uh, county executive has proposed of uh, offering a of, of, of establishing a two percent raise as of July first, and an additional two percent as of January first for the non-represented employees of Wood River County. Second. Any any further discussion by the commissioners? Mr. Benton? Yes. Mr. Joplin? Yes. Mr. Babbitts? Yes. Mr. Perkins? Yes. Chair votes yes. Thank you. Anything, anything else on the, uh, for the good of the order, Jeff? Nope, that's it. Okay, thank you everyone for your time and, and uh, stay safe this, uh, this summer and less Try to stay safe from here on out. <laughs> Take I care will, of yourself. I'll try, I'll try to. It's pretty safe on my couch. So. Yeah, yeah. You can ask if you want to go biking less. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Take well.